Okay, so now we're going to do residuals, okay? Residuals are how far your actual values, your observed values are from your predicted, okay? And we'll get that into that in a second. What I want to do first is I have to take care of some business from our previous problems. I have to remove the outlier from our original data. So in your TI-84, the last point you have is 8666. Can you move this from your L1 and remove this from your L2 at the very bottom? And then recalculate on your TI-84, this is important, your original least squared regression line, okay? Which means you'll have to go to uh, stat and then calc. And then what we'll do is we'll go down to eight, which is lin reg a plus bx. Make sure you have L1 and L2 there. And don't forget the Y1 and store regression equation. That's really the most important feature. Okay. Take a minute and do that. Maybe hit pause first on this video. And then once you have that all fixed, then you can return and we'll talk about residuals. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a basic residual here before I address our actual uh, residuals for our data. If you can imagine just what an array of points may look like with a least squared regression line put in, a residual is nothing more than the vertical distance from the point to the regression line. Okay, sometimes they're above your regression line, sometimes your points are below. And if they're below, that means your residual is a negative value, whereas these would be positives. Okay, so. For ours, we have 96, okay? I'm gonna use this as the very first example. So residual is, again, your observed Y minus your predicted Y. And again, I'm doing this for 96. So my observed outcome for a temperature of 96 degrees was a score of 73. The predicted, which is what we did on our previous slide, and predict is just a guess. Well, we took 96 and plugged it into the equation. And I think that gave us uh, 74.11, okay? And if you subtract those out, you get negative 1.11, okay? What does that mean? Well, it means that she had a score that was 1.11 lower than what we predicted it to be. Okay, so she actually a little bit, did a little bit better with 96 degrees outside than what we would have guessed, all right? Remember, a lower score is a better score. All right, so here's what we do. On this plot, I'm gonna try to draw a straight line right down the middle. And that'll have to do, it's not too bad. And off to the side, I'm gonna call this my residual. That's my vertical representation. And on the bottom, I'll keep the same uh, input value. I'm going to say this is temperature. And at 96, let me crawl over here. I'm going to move down from this axis, which I'll call zero. Okay. And I'm not going to call it zero, but it has a value of zero at that axis. I'm going to go down 1.11. Okay. And why am I going down 1.11? Well, that's what the negative will represent. Okay, if it were positive, then at 96, I would go above. Okay. And I'm gonna do that for the remaining nine points. Okay, so you're like, I've got 10 little dots that I'm gonna be putting onto this residual plot, starting from 78, working all the way to 111. Okay, from these that we see for these respective axes. Now, some of you are like, you know what, I don't wanna do all this. Not that it's hard math, but I just don't wanna put that in my graphing calculator every single time for all of these y's minus y hat of the respective x's. Okay, so here's what you can do that will make this a little bit more quick. Assuming that you still have these in L1 and L2, what I'm gonna do in my L3 is find all the pieces that, let me use a different color for a second, that you would find from this y hat. Okay, so we found 74.11. And what I wanna do is find all of those for these respective uh, X and Y values. So this was X, this is Y, this is gonna be Y hat. Those are all the predicted with an input of your X values. Okay, now what are my X values? Well, 
Luckily for us, all our X values are stored in my L1. So you'll notice down here, I've highlighted L3, and at the bottom, okay, I put the command for it. It is Y1. Remember, you have to find Y1 by doing alpha trace. Okay, and then it should show up. Or use the vars feature, vars, and then scroll over to Y vars, and then basically you're hitting enter twice after that. Okay, but then behind it, make sure you put parentheses, not a time sign, and then L1. Remember, L1 are all of your X values. So that would be a quick way of including all these X values into this equation and getting results. Now, the cool thing is, is that 96 is already here, and I have a respective value for that, 74.117, and that matches what I had before. If I consider all the other options, okay, these are the values you would get. All right, now consider what we did next. Once we found this 74.11 for the 96, we subtracted it from the original Y value that was observed. All right, now, where's our, our original Y values? Those are in L2, those are all right here. Okay, so L2 has all your Ys. I'm gonna mark that in this little graph. In my L3s, I have all my Y hats, okay, with the respective Xs. And so what I'm gonna do in my L4, I'm gonna highlight this, okay? So scroll up to the L4, not below it, but actual L4, hit enter, and I'm gonna subtract my L2s minus my L3s, which is basically this operation that I had above. Okay, and once you hit enter, you'll get a bunch of values here. These are all your residuals for your respective X's. So there's your X's, there's your residuals. And again, as you look at all these, the one that is the 96, if you go straight across, it has a value of negative 1.17, 117, and that's about what I had right here. Okay, so that's how it was graphed. And these are the items that you are gonna graph with the respective X values. All right, so do me a favor, take a minute and make these coordinates, make it X, and then this is your residual. Okay, and graph the other nine on uh, the graph that I have above here. Okay, and I'll do the same and we'll see you have the same thing. All right, so I'm gonna pause it and we'll connect in a second. Okay, so here's what my graph looks like with all these respective points, okay? And what you wanna observe is this. They're gonna say, hey, is this a good representation of um, a residual? And does this residual provide an opportunity to say that the least squared regression model was an appropriate one? And so let me write that, least squared regression model. I think my pen is running out of ink here, if that makes sense. Okay, sometimes they'll say model. Appropriate. Okay, and then here's what you have to do. Let me do this in another color. You're gonna look at your residual plot and see if there's any defining pattern, okay? And if I look, moving from left to right, you can see that uh, it just kind of zigzags back and forth. And a zigzag is great, okay? That makes me happy. I like a zigzag pattern. Okay, and if you have a zigzag, that means that um, the linear model is appropriate. Okay, so provided that we have some like undefined pattern, and zigzag is kind of like an undefined pattern, then that is good. That means that our model, our least squared regression line, the y hat equals the a plus bx that we found, okay, up here um, was appropriate, okay? It means that line will fit our data well. And there's not a better model out there, meaning not a better parabola or a logarithmic that would fit our data more closely. So that the line is best, okay? So let's look a little bit more at other residuals, okay? 
And it says, based off these residual plots, do you believe the least squared regression line model is good? Okay. And this, again, kind of leads to what we had before. As you read this from left to right, okay, you can see that there is a bunch of zigzags. Okay. As the answer is yes, the linear model is good. If you looked at this bottom one, you could see, yes, it can get zigzags back and forth, which means the linear model is appropriate, okay? If you look at this one, yeah, it kind of zigzags, but you notice that there is a pattern. It makes somewhat of a parabola, okay? And if that's the case, then here, yeah, you'd say that the linear model is not good, okay? Linear model which means your linear equation, okay, you can say equation, is not good. And what that means is your original points, okay, made maybe a picture that kind of looked like this. Okay, and maybe there's some line that fits through it pretty decent and it gives you a really good R value. However, there may be another equation that fits it better than a line. Maybe, maybe there's a parabola that fits that more closely or maybe a, a logarithmic, okay? There's another function that may work that fits that better, okay? So it doesn't mean that the model is bad necessarily, it just means that there is another model that's better. And so because of that, we'll reject that idea. That a linear model is best, okay? If you look at this one, some people may look at that and say, wow, that's very zigzaggy, but in a nutshell, it's really not. It's actually a representation of a parabola going just the reverse direction, so here, it is also not good, okay? Linear model, not good. 